Hey, what's up everybody? Whew, it's been a minute since I've been on. I've had a lot of other things going on and I just really haven't focused on uh, taking videos of what I've been doing with my tanks. So I think that today I'm going to start doing that. Now, this tank here is new. It is a 10 gallon, uh, I forget the maker, I think it was like Sepora or something like that. It was cheap, it was like 22 bucks. Um, it is being used for breeding my tiger endlers. You can see the males over there on the right, the females are to the right as well, and then there's just fry absolutely everywhere. I just fed them brine shrimp, baby brine shrimp to be exact, so I mean, they're kind of scattered, and they're eating off the bottom and the plants and everywhere else. But what do I have in this tank that makes it successful for breeding? Well, I have a lot of moss, I have a lot of floating plants, I've got duckweed, I've got <clears throat> excuse me, frog bit and floating fern as far as surface plants goes. I have a pothos growing out of the top that eventually will grow much longer. I've got a moss ball. I've got a couple different types of Anubis including a Nana Petite which is back uh, right by that cherry shrimp. I think you can just see the leaves from it. Sorry about the reflection but it's super bright in my bedroom. Uh, I've got another Anubis there and the dwarf lily is in the center with some val in the back some floating swords that i'm growing out right now <laughs> like this this tank is just a hodgepodge of different plants right now and it's working because they're breeding extremely well i've also got some indian almond leaf down on the bottom which is releasing some tannins into the water now tiger antlers don't necessarily need that but I just do it for the sake of doing it. I mean, I had all these leftover almond leaves that I was adding to my other tanks. And if anything, they're just going to make sure that the tank is healthy. Uh, the, I can't remember what the pH is in this tank right now. I tested everything yesterday. But the hardness of my water coming out of the well, it's, uh, it's right up there. So for endlers, guppies, neocardinias, things of that nature, my water right out of the tap is beautiful. It's not chlorinated at all. It has a lot of... Oh, excuse me. Whew. I think I have a lot of iron uh, and things like that. So, I mean, it's it's perfect for those fish that like a, uh, a really good hardness to, uh, to their water. I've got a digital heater back there. I can't remember the make. It, it comes from China. They spelt heater wrong, but it works. <laughs> I'm not surprised that... Uh, it does work, however, since pretty much all of our aquarium parts are made over there. So I have nothing against Japanese or Chinese-made products for the aquarium. Uh, I've got a... I think that's the Pokao corner filter. Again, same thing. It's an Asian brand. Uh, it's got some biomedia down in the bottom, which I think I have three or four ceramic rings in there and then a lot of porous gravel and stuff. Um, and then I think there's three layers of mechanical filtration that lead up to uh, that thing just spitting water out of the top. Now, this tank did have evaporation issues before I set up what I usually set up. And that is, you can just see it here, but I put a lid from, I think that was off a of wonton soup that I had quite a while ago. Uh, through the hose and if you look carefully you can just see there's algae growing all over it and a lot of the times my crystal reds and uh, other shrimps and other tanks including this one my cherries will go up there and they'll actually actively feed on that algae you can see it just stringing off of there and that's mainly due to the fact that it's really close to the light and the bubbles are breaking off of that and instead of going up onto my glass and causing sediment deposits they're just basically staying in the tank. So it's a really simple setup. Um, I think cost-wise, if I knew what I had invested into this tank, I'd let you know. There's there's probably... I know I'm less than $100 in this whole setup. My background, which a lot of people when they come over ask me, wow, that's so cool. It's a yoga mat. And I cut it to fit. And I just taped it on like you normally would any background. So, like, it's nothing special, but it stops the reflection 
of not having a background on the tank, and it does uh, seem to help out with me being able to see the fry a bit better since they're a lighter color. When I had no background on there, like I lost them every time I'd look for them. I've also got a breeding colony of... Where are they? Oh, oh there's one right there. The... Um, Ram's horn snails. These are the reds, although the coloration's not too great on a few of them right now. It's not due to mineral deficiency. It's just, I think, the camera that's showing it. They're, they're more like a, a peachy color in person. So, they're pretty cool. I, I actually gave some of them to my local fish store to start. And uh, that's where I'm thinking that these endlers are going to end up as well. The males, at least probably going to call out all the females uh, that are from this generation except a few and I'll probably have like a two to maybe four male to female ratio just to keep things balanced and then I'll selectively call all the males and determine which ones I'm going to sell and the way that I do it with the pet store is uh, my sales are based on store credit so I mean I'm buying stuff from my aquariums anyways so to get store credit off of bringing these guys in is just as good to me as cash in hand. Because truth be told, cash in hand, I would just end up spending it there. So uh, it's, it's even better. But anyhow, this tank's doing great. Uh, it's been going now for just under a month. I already had that filter staged in another tank. It was seeded really well. So when I started this tank out, my parameters were perfect. It's heavily planted. Like there's a lot of stuff in here for a 10 gallon. Uh, I probably will be adding some more stuff and taking a few things out. I'm probably gonna take out the val and add dwarf hair grass along the back. But so far, this is just what I've got going on. As far as temperature goes, I'm anywhere between 76 and 78 on a daily basis it fluctuates probably due to the temperature of my room uh, for the most part I do have an air conditioner in here so a little digital heater is working its butt off but hey that's what they're there for I have an LED light that I bought on Amazon as well super cheap and it just sticks onto the top if I can find the receipts for all of these things I will post the descriptions down below on which ones what I got but as far as par goes, this light gives off more than enough to grow most of the medium to low light need plants. Your Java, your Java moss, your swords, uh, even things like Val, Anubis, uh, moss balls you can grow in anything, so I'm not even going to count that. It grows duckweed like crazy, and the frog bit and floating plants as well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing where this tank goes from here. If you guys have any questions, let me know, and we'll talk to you very soon.